Hey everybody. For Christmas, Jennifer gifted me a weather station. Not this one. This one is several years old, and when I first mounted it to the roof, all but a few feet away, we found out that that was not going to work. This is far too close to the roof, and we get a bad temperature reading. So, lessons learned. We have a new weather station, and now we're going to put it up much higher in the air. How? Well, here's how I'm going to do it. Whether it's the right way or not, you'll have to take that into your own advisement. First thing we have to do is get rid of this bad excuse for a mount that we used the first time. Brandon's off trying to find that little star bit so we can get it done. Found it. Boy, this thing sure got nasty over the last few years. If you look carefully, it's growing cobwebs. What crazy spider came all the way up here and made a web on the spinner? Crazy. We got all the visible screws out from the bracket going into the roof. Um, but this piece of wood that I thought was just covering up a hole might have a hidden screw under there because it, it feels like there's another screw right up at the top. So Brandon's taking care of these ones for us. Well, we learned two things. One, that piece of wood did absolutely nothing for keeping water out. And two, there's that screw we were looking for. Yeah, that poor ladybug, it was alive a second ago. It just, I don't think it is anymore. Well, I'll be darned. That bug is still alive. How long have you been in there? <laughs> Lucky little bug. Oh, time to be free. Be free. <laughs> oh, that's gone. Oops. I forgot that was in there. <laughs> So in this new mounting method, we're using a much taller pole. So to mount this, we're going to add in a support beam across the eave here. This isn't going to be the board I'm going to use. I'm using this 2 by just to get an idea for what size board I need. My roof is at such a shallow pitch that this is an 8 foot board and I'm only getting about a 1 foot drop. I don't want to get a super long board, but I think I will get at least a 10, if not a 12 foot board, and try to bring this down just a little bit more and separate my brackets. So we'll add in probably a 2 by 4 12 foot long board here, and then there'll be another section of 2 by 4 up here that we'll install brackets on to hold the actual mast for the weather station. I also want to know what the actual pitch of my roof is and probably the easiest way I can think to do this, you might be smarter, but I'm going to take this level and use it to make sure that I'm putting this paper level. So I'm going to level out my, my level just like this. I'm going to put this piece of paper up against the eave of my house right on top of the level and then I'm just going to stencil. I'm just going to draw a line right here right up against the eave of my house and follow the roof line. Just like that. So now I can cut the 2x4 to the same angle as my roof line and get that bracket as high up as I can, maximizing my gap between the two brackets so I can hold that mass even more securely. All right, so the point of this template is to be able to find a good spot on my scrap wood here and I just want to make that little section of wood that is going to let me put that top bracket in so here's the brackets that are actually going to hold the pole up so imagine that on the roof line like that so I'm going to use this template to help me get the right angles and cut this out I know the lines aren't real dark but here's what that looks like and then the bracket will sit in there just like that so this is the part we're keeping. And that's how that's going to fit, just like that. In the interest of doing as little as possible up on the roof, I'm going to center this bracket on here and drill the pilot holes for these bolts that came with the bracket. Now these bolts will actually go through this, and uh, barely, but they'll go through it. So uh, I'm not going to set these all the way in, but I'm going to put them 90% of the way in and we'll tighten it up up on the roof. That way I'm not having to figure all this out while I'm upside down. See, just like that there, and I've got the pilot holes go all the way through. And now I don't have to fuss with that once I'm up on the roof.
For the lower support beam, I'm going with a 2x4x12. By by and we're just going to do the same thing with this that we did with the little one we just finished. And what I'm going to do is find the exact middle on this board and pre-start uh, that bracket. And I'm also going to pre-start the screws on the end that will attach this to the house. So remember, this is the bottom, and we're, while we're down here on the ground, we're going to install this bracket most of the way. It's not going to get uh, just, just finger tight, so to speak, so that the pole can still slip. And you see what we're doing here? This is the swedged end of the pole. So even though this is supposed to be able to bracket in, clamp onto this, and never let it slip, we're going to add a little extra insurance by using this swedged end right here to allow it to sit on top of this bracket when we clamp it down. So now we got that set in place, and it'll help us hold the pole while we're getting everything else level up on the roof. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is lean over the edge of the house and put in this bracket and I can't film while we're doing that so that's what the cow thinks we'll be right back in case you were wondering we got this all centered by using a plum we attached it to this top bracket used it as an anchor and just put it right off the center of the apex of the roof and lined it up that way so that's how we did that and then of course uh, just a standard level on the top of the wood and here we are we did it. There it is. Looky there. Now we'll put in the top one. That should be a lot easier. <laughs> okay, now we got the top brace on. And uh, what we did is remember before I put the uh, bracket together down there, we stood the pipe up in that and made sure it was good and hand tight. And then we used that to make sure that this was plumb and a level actually across the bracket to make sure it was level. So now we're going to stand the pipe in it and attach the brackets themselves and get the pipe good and plumb. So it's kind of hard to show you how tall this thing is, but there's Brandon. He's five foot two. And you can see how much higher above the, uh, the roof line it goes from there. So that's a lot better than the one foot we were off the roof before. So let me back up a little bit. And you can kind of see and uh, now we got to go inside and actually get the the weather system configured and we just have the pole finger tight uh, we'll come back and uh, lift the pole up attach the weather vane onto it and then put it back into place so to maintain this all we're going to have to do brandon pick up that little wrench is take a little crescent wrench like this and barely loosen uh, four little nuts and uh, we can just lift up the pole and set it down on the roof and maintain it. So uh, that was kind of one of the questions. Well, how are we going to maintain this thing if it's, you know, a good eight feet or so above the roof surface? Well, that's how we're going to do it. We'll just loosen the nuts and take the whole pole. The weather station itself doesn't weigh like two pounds, so it's not a big deal. So, we clean it. <laughs> so it's starting to sprinkle on us. We're going to go take care of that, and we'll come back for day three. So now the only thing left to do is put the actual weather station on top of the mast. Now, this needs to sit facing exactly south, the solar panel facing exactly south. It happens to be that I know my house is set exactly north to south along this roof line. So all I have to do is make sure that this is sitting parallel to the roof line and it'll be facing north to south. So there it is atop the pole, and it's just a little U-bolt up there, and this is how we'll service it. Uh, we can simply, with a, a little 10 millimeter wrench, loosen those clamps and take the entire pole out and then lay this down on the roof to do any servicing. It only has to be cleaned the rain area, the rain gauge area, once per year. Otherwise, the only maintenance is if we're noticing a problem up here without any trees nearby to get uh, all these trees are a good 60 feet away without any trees above it to get debris in there I don't think more than once a year is going to be a problem with service well there it is way up there so 
I don't know what else to tell you. I'm really excited about having this new weather station. The last one we had lasted several years, and this one's built 100 times better. So maybe we'll never have to replace it again, and that would be an awesome thing. So that's how I did it, but you don't have to do it this way. There's a dozen different ways you can do it, and this easily could have been on the ground if you wanted it on the ground. They just have different requirements for how far away it is from trees, asphalt off the ground and things like that to make sure that your readings are pretty accurate so i'll put a link down in the description to the one that we used and maybe you'll follow along and do your own little weather station like we did i look forward to seeing this not only because it gives us a temperature you can get a thermometer for that but for the rainfall i'm very interested in having this digitally record our rainfall rate over the incoming years thank you all so much for watching we'll see you next time